We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Appreciate you hanging out with us on this Wednesday. All right, so uh, Barrett uh, mentioned in the in the first segment we were, we were kicking around a couple things Eagles wise, particularly the running back situation. Who better to talk to than our guy Coach Marcus, uh, who joins us right now, former Eagles running back. And before we get to it, Coach Marcus, let us know where we can check out the show, Pro Fan Talk, uh, A2D Radio. Give us all the deets, man. Yes, sir. I am every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on A2D Radio. That's YouTube.com slash A2D Radio. And you can check me out uh, on my personal YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com at slash at Pro Fan Talk. So nice. kicking the knowledge every day, man. Trying to stay busy like y'all, brothers. Give us uh give us your take and, and we appreciate that, man. Uh give us your take on on Trey Sermon, who, you know, was a guy who was a third round pick of the Niners, looked like he had some potential, had a really good college career, went Oklahoma, Ohio State. Um, you know, was a guy who's kind of waiting in the wings, didn't get a whole lot of opportunities last year, but with Miles Sanders gone, even though all these guys are coming back, Boston Gainwell and now Rashad Penny, do you think he has a shot to make some kind of impact? Because I will tell you. High praise from from Nick Sirianni yesterday on, on on it wasn't just the usual yeah we really like him no like he went out his way to praise him yeah I, I hope that's not becoming like one of the things that Sirianni does he just goes over and above with every player that he has the yeah. the sample size with with sermons is so small I like what I saw when he when he played the, what little bit he played um, but it it's one of those things where you don't know until you know. Mm -hmm. he's he's never been in he's never got experience i don't know what the situation was out in san francisco but we got him he's a big back and i was like why not why not put him in there mm. we we i had my issues with how we were running the ball last year um but he is a big back he is a young back he's got plenty of mileage left on his tires so why didn't we use him there's got to be a reason for it. So we will see what happens in camp. But even saying that anymore is very difficult because what do they do in camp? When we were in camp, you know, when we we banged in camp, especially if you were undrafted free exactly. agent like, yep. like me, I had to prove that I belong there. So you, every drill, you was jumping in there, 707 team drills. And we were the guys that uh, if we were running the ball. Everybody on the defense knew where we were going. Seth knew where I was going. Byron Evans knew where I was going. So you had to suck it up and get through that hole and do what you had to do. And you had to prove your metal in camp. Now it's very difficult to do all. The only sample size you get for, from guys with no experience is preseason games. And then what do you see in preseason <clears throat> vanilla defenses, um, stuff like that. The only thing you can see is like, for instance, the, the, the quick burst you saw from uh, what's the, the hurdler Devin Allen, right? Okay, now you know he's fast, but can he sit on his hips and come out of a a, a route or in or out or can he change directions fast enough? I know his straight no. line of speed is good, but we need the other side. <laughs> no. no, you know what I mean. So <laughs> it, it's very difficult to see what you have now because you just don't see that in preseason no more, and it's just this whole safe thing that they're doing. Uh, it just makes it that much more difficult to gauge what kind of talent you have. Coach, I will say this. When you talk about a Trey Sermon, <clears throat> he had 41 carries in San Francisco, and he averaged four, over four yards a carry. But then again, with the way they run that offense, that stretch offense in a running game, it, I hate to say it like this because it, it's kind of demeaning and disrespecting those who do it. But they're so efficient at it. Anybody can get four yards a carry in that 49ers offense. Okay. Secondly, he gets two carries here in, for 19 yards. The numbers are skewed a little bit because he had that 14 yard run, but I, I think he gets a fair shake this year in terms of look being looked at as a fourth back number one, because he is a fresh set of legs at 24 years of age. He is a big back. He was a good running back when he was at Ohio state. So you're like, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I don't know what happened to him, but because, and Howie Roseman basically said it because they were so tight on the budget this year, you know, and they know they got to give Jalen all that money. Yeah. Trey, Trey might be the guy that fits in as that number four back. I mean, he couldn't get any touches last year because they were committed to the three guys ahead of him. You know, you had to draft the game. Well, you got to play him. Boston Scott does multiple things for you. You got to give him his touches. And, of course, you know what Miles Sanders was to this offense. So I think Trey, who is on a very, very cap-friendly number, will get a better look this year to be that four guy than, he, than last year, I would say. 
I hope you're right. Uh, Cause I want to be able to see what we have. I don't want to be in a situation where somebody leaves and wherever they go, mm-hmm. they blow up. And it was like, mm-hmm. well, why couldn't we see that here? Yeah. Um, like even the guys that stayed, I'm one of those that think uh, some point next year, the, the Philadelphia faithful is going to be upset because they're going to see, and this is just my opinion. They're going to see Nicobe Dean and they're going to get mad because we're going to be like, well, why couldn't we see him last year do this? I think it might be one of those situations. I hope that's um, a good problem, though, right, Coach Marcus? It, it I mean, definitely is a good. It problem. don't mean he can play. Yeah, but you know how we are in Philly, man. We, you know, we'll find something bad about it. But <laughs> well, and, you know, I, I hope Sermons get his gets his shot. I'm with you, D Gun. I, I hope mm-hmm. he gets his shot, and I hope he makes the most of it. I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I, I won't, I won't, I won't say that I'm going to see that thing because I don't think we're going to run the ball enough. Um, we we know what the Eagles do. The Eagles like to pass the ball first, get a lead, and then run the ball in the second half. And I can't be mad at them because it worked. It worked great last year. But when you have the type of athlete that you have at the quarterback position, what he brings to the table, you can think about how dynamic the whole offense can be if they did run more. I don't think we're going to see enough Rashad Penny. Um, I think they're going to play the game well a lot. But, I, I mean, to me, honestly, Rashad Penny is going to be probably our, 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 fourth, our, our, you know, our fourth quarter running back. You know, closing games out as opposed to being an impact player throughout the game. I'm just looking at the history of what we see. The history of what we see is we know that they're going to throw the ball to set up the second half to run the ball. It's just, you know, it's just what they've done. It's just what they like to do. And, um, you know, I mean, what do you think the offense is going to be like, even with Rashad Penny now? That's the X factor. Because we don't know what Brian Johnson, we don't know what his logic is going to be. I know they're not going to change everything to your point because it worked. But he he's also looked at uh, a lot of things and he's got to be able to tweak it. He's got to be able to understand that you can't have Jalen Hurts with 17 rushes in a game. You, you got to be able to, to think outside the box at least a little mm-hmm. bit. And even with Rashad Penny, I think Rashad Penny is an awesome back, and he would be awesome in this system because we're not going to run him like a number one back. So that'll at least hopefully keep him from getting injured. But if you look at him uh, when he was in Seattle, did he run from the gun a lot? No, he he was in ace formation mm-hmm. and was he's a downhill back. Now, the situation with um, the reason why – me and so many other people would love for us to get uh, the kid for uh, Bajan. Uh, what's the name? Bajan Robinson. Robinson. Robinson yeah. If you look how he runs the ball, he runs the ball out of gun formation. But it's probably not going to happen. You know, that's a pipe dream at this point. So it, the biggest X factor is how is Brian Johnson going to run this offense? What is he going to do different? He can't do everything the same. He's got to change it up to make it his own. Mm-hmm. That's the question. What is he going to change up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I just I, – I guess – when it comes to Jalen and running, I, despite what the Eagles are saying, like, hey, no matter what the kind of contract he signs, we're, we're not going to ask him to not be himself. And I, I don't think all of a sudden he's never going to run. But we know this. As you get older and you get better at processing and, and reading defenses, there, there's less cause to run. I don't want to take it away from him. Certainly, it's a big part of his game. But I don't think he's going to run. I, like, Marcus, I don't think – I think there's going to be very few 17 rushing attempt kind of games, unless he's under crazy heat, like the Detroit game where he was running for his life half the time. I, I just don't think we're going to see that. I think there's going to be lot less rushing attempts, and that's okay, too. I mean, I think it's, a, it's actually mm-hmm. a progression. I, I agree, and I, and I hope that is the progression that he takes. Uh, if you look early in, in McNabb's career, he did the same thing. Yep. <clears throat> I remember that one year he came back bulked up and because he, he wanted it to be in the pocket. That was also the year he was throwing all the balls in the dirt, but he worked himself out of that. But there was a purpose for that, and he – he was right. You're not so, just gonna let that slide back. <laughs> he's just gonna not. <laughs> he's just throwing the dirt. Okay, see, he, come on. He, man. he, he was throwing because I remember that year he had bulked up and a lot of his balls were low. Yeah. But to his point, he wanted to be more protected in the pocket, and that's exactly what happened. He he became a pocket quarterback, and he got out of there when he had to get out of there. That's what Jalen's gonna end up doing. They'll have enough times where he has to scramble out of the pocket and get his yards to do that. But it all comes down to, again, how Brian Johnson wants to do it. Um, Are we ever going to get a screen game back? I don't know. 
It all depends on I, what I miss you them days. Oh my god, man. Screen, screen game. What's that? Right. <laughs> and, man, not to mention, in my opinion, we got the best trio of tight ends in the league. And we should be able to use all of that, put all of that stuff in the pot, man. And our offense should be nice. But we got the man that's calling the shots, that's calling the plays, has got to be on point. I would, I would go back and say this also. Um, if you look at their overall stats for the regular season, they threw the ball 536 times, but they ran the ball 544. So they ran it a little bit more. Now, that number skewed a little bit because after Miles 259 carries, your quarterback had 165 carries. Mm-hmm. So if you want to reduce the physical stress and wear and tear on your quarterback, I do believe that the passing numbers should exceed the rushing numbers if you reduce the amount of runs your quarterback has to run. And I'm not talking about when he has a scramble. Every quarterback has a scramble. I'm talking about the called running plays for that guy if you want to reduce the wear and tear on him. And then I would think the passing numbers start to exceed the run numbers. I, I agree 100%. Uh, listen, I'm a running back. So my my position is dying. We are becoming extinct. Uh, there are very, very few true running backs coming into the league now. Now everybody has to be CMC. Everybody mm-hmm. has to be Debo or like Gainwell. Everybody mm-hmm. wants a hybrid now. So even uh, but John Robinson catches the ball just as good as he could run the ball. So people like Derrick Henry, people like Zeke, uh, big backs Rashad Penny, those guys are dying out because everybody wants that hybrid now. But we had the offensive line last year. We could have smashed mouth anybody, and they couldn't stop it. And for some reason, they just didn't do that. And I think they wasted a lot of opportunities in that situation. But we'll see what they're going to do next year because now we got changes on the offensive line. Now okay, we got to so, fill some gaps, and we still got to go forward. So where do you think uh, where do you think Robinson is going to go in the draft? You know, right around where? Uh, I I'm hoping. That he doesn't fall to, to Dallas. I know that's the. I said the same thing. <laughs> I know that's what everybody doesn't want to happen. I've seen four they, mock drafts where Dallas picks him up. Yeah, uh, or trades up to get him. Yes, yeah. they pick twenty six um, right now. I think it's. I, I'm not. If I'm not mistaken. I think it's yeah. twenty six. And I think I've seen four mock drafts where, oh Jerry, Jerry Jones. Yeah, they're twenty six. <laughs> Jerry, you know, goes out there yeah. and picks them at, at I don't know, man. They, they tag the Pollard. That's a lot of money tied up in, in running backs. Yeah, but you know what, though, Rob? If you if if somehow he slips to 26, yeah, the number you have to pay him on the first is much different than if you try to get him in the top 10. You're saving right. millions if you get him in the lower, lower. I mean, you're right. They franchise Pollard. But this is a, this is a Jerry Jones storyline. Kids already had Texas, stays in Texas. Yep. See that, that's a that's a Jerry Jones line right there. See, yeah, I guess, and, and you know the kid's gonna be dynamic, man. You know he's gonna end. Oh and my goodness! It's, I know this sounds kind of dark, but Jerry Jones is trying to make one last splash before he's out of here. So <laughs> by out of here, you mean like yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I mean like out of here. You mean retired? You mean retired or in a box? He's, because he's never gonna retire, so it's gonna have to listen. be in a box. He's never because retired, at, bro. At, at Until he's in the big time. press box in the sky. Right. <laughs> exactly, man. At some point, every time I see that man in a press conference, he looks worse and worse. And I'm like, dude, eventually you got to get that baton to your son and let and just back off. No and way is he backing off. He's not he he backing back off. Do it. No. He loves the well, limelight too. They're gonna have to pull that baton out of his hands, man. Bro, he looks like he, the crypt keeper. He ready, wants. Man. He wants to be able. <laughs> <laughs> so I look he at absolutely him, man, like, does, man. You know what I mean? But he he got to put. You know, he got to. Use more moisturizer because his, his face started oh like my God, man. rawhide or and, something. You know, what and man? the thing is, when he's gone, he still will be there because you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna put him at the fifty yard line. You know that, bro? <laughs> oh, he's already he's that. already bought a machine right now that can take his essence and that, put that it in one little digitally. spot where the light where the sun comes in. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be his spotlight right there, man. Every game, every, every home game will be let us have, every home game will be. Let us have a moment of silence for for Jerry. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Thank God. you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it ain't, it, it ain't, it, I mean, we got – I would love to have John Robinson because I think he's he's that type of – I guess the best uh, the best comparison would be CMC or Debo. Um, damn, they're both on the same team. That's still scary. Uh, but he's that, he's that type of player. But in our offense, are we going to – if we had somebody like that, would we give him the ball? 
enough. No, and that's that's but that coach, that's what gets back to when we we have these debates. That's why yeah. I say the Eagles wouldn't use a resource like that because they know themselves, you know, better than anybody else. Exactly. Agreed. They would not, Agreed. they would not stay consistent with it. They don't look, their belief is you win throwing. Jeffrey Lurie yeah, will yeah. tell you that. Yeah, you know, so they're not gonna invest. A first rounder, I don't think. And I, I look, I think it hits kids dynamic, but I just don't think they're going to invest a first rounder on it. Let's, let me ask all of you guys this because I've seen this three times now this week in mock drafts. What if the Eagles took an offensive lineman at number 10? It's not crazy. It's not crazy. I'd be mad. Now you want me crazy. to react on that. Huh? You wanted me to react negatively on that, but no, I didn't. They, no. No. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. If they did that, that'd be status quo. Because mm-hmm. I was, I'm still like dumbfounded of the past two years that we've taken an offensive lineman in the second round the past right. two years. Yep. Right. But it just so happened those second rounders are playing great the past two years. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, mean especially fan, not fan, crazy at 30 if you're still, if they hold on to right. 30. Right. But you know, the fan base is screaming for, you know, a, a edge rusher, a cornerback, um, a wide receiver at 10. They, they don't even want to hear offensive linemen, but it's very feasible that this organization, because they like to build from the inside out, might look at a serious offensive lineman at number 10. In my opinion, that first choice is if you could get uh, Witherspoon or Gonzalez, you get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Or, or if, by, if by chance something goofy happens and Jalen Carter falls all the way down. Which could have possibly you know, happen also. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yep, yep, yep. And then I like uh, – uh, I forget what is he another Georgia kid? Is that Kelly Ringo? No, Alabama. yeah, Ringo, Ringo, no, Ringo's in yeah. Georgia. Ringo, he's, Georgia. He's, he's Georgia. Yeah. The uh, who is it? Branch is Alabama, right? Yeah, Branch yeah. is the safety yeah. slash. He's more the hybrid, yeah. uh, slot corner safety guy. I, I, I guess everybody. It's become a vogue thing now to go get guys that can hybrids be, again. It, yeah, because you look at um, you look at well the safety from Notre Dame went to the Ravens. He played Kyle more, Kyle yeah. Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton. He played more as their nickel back than he played at the mm-hmm. safety position. He yeah. was inside the box playing covers more so than he was um, being a deep safety. And I thought he was going to be a deep safety. He ended up not being a deep safety. He's, he's more of a slot guy than anything. So those hybrid guys, I could see us picking picking him up in the in the in in the round thirty. I could see him using that second round, you know, the second pick in the, in the first half, in the first um, first round to pick up that guy from Alabama, the safety yeah. slash, you know, nickel corner guy in the third. And I would not be mad at that either. That be oh, a we good still looking at that guy Neil, the guy from what was it from Tampa Bay? He was a linebacker that played safety at one point, so he can go both ways. Um, yeah. I don't think we ended up signing them, but I, I I don't know if they're still in negotiations or 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 EB, we, Keanu we Neal. Yeah, Keanu, I, I, I get it. Nothing's come of that yet. No, no Keanu but, Neal so, is, is 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 he probably ended up back in Dallas or where yeah. he, he played in Dallas and he played in um, Atlanta. He probably ends up back there because at this point they don't value a safety safety guy anymore. I tell you but what, I, there's something to be said, man. When you when you get these young guys in. And they come in and they got familiarity. Yep. Uh, and so you got possibly another Georgia kid coming in. Mm-hmm. So now you got three. So yep. That or Alabama. Yeah. And if you, I mean, Barrett, you remember you go, you report to camp that first time, and you see somebody that you played against that for whatever reason you got some familiar familiarity with, you gravitate to that. Absolutely. And that makes you a little bit more comfortable in camp. That yep. helps you out tremendously in camp, mm-hmm. just so you can relax and do what you got to do. A lot of you know, a lot of guys. You know, it was a Big Eight conference when I was there, but a lot of guys from the Big Eight conference played. You know, played against each other, but we became really, really good friends mm-hmm. while you know in the locker room. You know, so I mean that 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 happens all the time. You know, especially conference guys. You know, guys you played against. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, look, there's so many. It would appear to be obvious stuff on defense that they would they would have to address, whether it's corner. Uh, D tackle edge because you know you still have BG there get, on a one year deal. All those areas would appear to be, but I, yeah, I mean offensive line, I, they got to look at it at some point. You know, if if Jurgens isn't one hundred percent their guy at guard, if you know, they're looking at Lane's got three more years, 
whatever. Uh, you know, they're they're not they're not particularly young in certain spots there. That wouldn't surprise me. And they love these swing guys. They like to cross train them. Well, so, yeah. a guy that they could pick up in the first round and get him right around ten, or if they traded back a little bit, is a guy. Um, he's probably the he's probably my number one offensive tackle in the draft is Paris Johnson from Ohio State. Oh, Paris did you Johnson. see his his pro day? Some of the stuff he was doing, unbelievable, unbelievable. He just moved up. He moved up the rank. He went from number two to to number one, and he he can play in the inside. Talking about cross training, he can play guard. He can play tackle. He can play swing tackle for him too. So that that'd be the perfect pick for him. I don't know if they could, they would go out and get um get the kid from North, Northwestern, you know, or even Broderick Jones, Broderick Skor- Jones Skoronsky. from Georgia. Yeah. Yes, you know, Skoronsky is good, yeah. man, but he's got. Yeah. He's got them, you know, pterodactyl. T Rex, T Rex arms. arms. Yeah, you know, just. Kelly but they're saying, but they're Kelly. saying he make a better guard. They say he's make a, he would make a better guard than tackle. Great guard because guards, you know, you want that instant. You want yeah. that 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 it power back. right there. Come back and you know, say yeah. But you know, he just <laughs> you terrible man. You um, started it. Yeah, but Broderick Jones, I just think he's a little too stiff. Uh, at the at the tackle position, I don't think he can move fluidly enough to be um, at number ten. The pick that they pick up, or you can get him later in the draft. I, I, I assume you could, but he's a big dude though. It's almost six foot six, like three thirty. Um, he's good out in space, but he just doesn't, he doesn't handle pass blocking well on the outside. And you got a pass block to be in this offense. See, I think it's imperative they look at the defense because. All of a sudden, the defense has gotten older. The key components on the defense, Fletcher, Brandon, you know, Bradbury, Slay. You know, it's got, it's, we're talking about thir- the primary contingent of the big money guys on this defense now have gotten older. Um, and I think it's, you, you know, we talk about getting younger on the offense, especially at the line. You got to start getting younger, too, in the middle and the back end of that defense. Yeah, You're right. Um, we got, we got some holes to plug. The, the, is it me or <clears throat> is the quarterback pro day to me useless? Yeah, you're throwing <laughs> against yeah, 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 yes. You're playing catch. Offense, <laughs> offense, yeah, offensive, throwing linemen, against there. Yeah. offensive linemen and defensive linemen, pro days make sense because you can see how they can move their feet. You can see what the balance is, how low yeah. they can get, all technique type stuff. Yeah. But these quarterback pro days, I'm like, what did you see in the pro day that you didn't watch on tape? Yeah, I exactly. hope he can hit a guy – you know, 60 yards down the field with nobody covering the guy and no pressure on him or else yeah, what, what yeah. are we doing here? But yeah. Oh, Barrett's got his, got his white castle, Derek. Enjoy. There you oh, go. Oh man. Barrett, I, I, I feel you, Brett. I feel you, Barrett. I, I'm a white castle fan. Oh, white castle, there you go. White there castles were all around Cincinnati. Oh. So on Friday nights after the high school football games, that's what you went to White Castles and then you went to the skating rink. That's what yeah. we did. Well, see, we, 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 didn't have in, we didn't have him in Milwaukee. We, we would drive down to Chicago an hour and a half to Chicago once in a blue moon to get White Castle. You know, you go out late night. It you made know, you the man you are, line. Derek. It what? It made you the man you are for doing that. It made me a lot faster because yes, I had to, to run to you know where a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't lying. There, I, had he ain't four, lying. I had four. I had four three speed back then. <laughs> All right, Coach Marcus, we appreciate it, man. Remind everybody again where they can catch the show. Okay, you can catch me on A Two D Radio Thursday nights at seven p.m. as well as my YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash at ProFanTalk. And also, got to mention, me and my wife's 26th anniversary, man. We're rocking it, breaking records up in this piece. Happy uh, anniversary. Yeah. Happy Happy anniversary. anniversary. Good work, man. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate Happy it. Happy anniversary, You got bro. it, brothers. Thank right, you. Man. Take care. All right, let's get a quickie in here. We got Chris Franklin coming up from the NFL owners meetings in Arizona. I'll let Barrett get his, uh, get his break. Let him eat. Let him Look at him. I haven't seen him this happy. This is the happiest he's been, maybe ever. And unless somebody said yeah, free lunch, it's great. <laughs> Gave me some chocolate cake. Unless somebody <laughs> told him free lunch, that's the happiest I've seen him. That's a good point. All right, <laughs> so let's get a quickie in. We'll come back. Let's get Chris up here. That's Derek. That's Let Barrett. I'm Rob. Though, man. Let me see that, man. Well, let me see what's on that sandwich. Now turn the other way, man. It's so just a cheeseburger. No? Double cheeseburger. Double cheese. Oh, there's no fish in it. Oh, I, I, right. I, I saw a stop. Like, stop. Just stop. Stop. All right. I can't oh, take it. I'm not going to be able to eat when you do that the rest of the day. All right. Let's get a quickie in here. That's good. Oh. Oh. Derek, Derek, Rob. No. Let's go. We're going to the break. Let's talk about uh, Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group. Save me. 
tone, please. All right, knowing who to trust with your finances can be a scary proposition. And I will tell you, I'm right there at the front of the line for a long time. But I found the right person. In fact, I talked to Jim yesterday about some things, reached out to him. We went over some stuff. He is absolutely on it, man. Whether it's retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, you might have a small business. You're trying to get help with your employee benefits. That's another resource that Jim can help you with. Personally, I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers to Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be too. Give him a call. 610-996-4751. 610-996-4751. You can also email him, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot Jim at principal.com. 